this weekend, obviously, against a team from your country. Are you excited about the game this weekend? Yeah, I'm excited because it is my, my I know this team, but, but I try to, to, my, my, to do my best and to win the game. In terms of the Costa Rica style of play as opposed to MLS, how different are they? I don't know. I think it's a little more slow, fast, fast. players do you know on the, the team you'll be playing? Do you know many of the guys? No, or? no, maybe three of them, but not really? much. Yeah. Most of them a little younger than you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What's it been like watching the World Cup, having been involved in the one four years ago for you? No, I don't. I don't watch uh, many games, so, so I don't know. It doesn't matter for no, me. No, you don't watch? No. How come? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Back here at the Insider with defender Robbie Russell. Robbie, thanks for joining us here today. Talk about uh, just coming back from the break. First of all, what did you do during your break? How did you spend the, uh, the nice five days off that Jason gave you guys? Uh, well, I went to D.C. Went to see my wife. I spent the five days there. It was nice, hot, humid. It was pleasant. Um, just the way we left it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, that's, it was a good break. And, uh, it's good to be back. I haven't played in Europe for so many years. You're used to being in leagues that take, you know, obviously longer breaks than two and a half weeks for, for the World Cup, such as we're in. But talk about the mentality uh, of, of going into a two-week break like this. Is it good to recharge the batteries, or, or on the other side, is it kind of bad to, to possibly take away from the momentum you guys have carried the last month and a half? Um, well, I mean, there's there's two sides to that coin. Uh, it, it all depends on you know the preparations you make during and after the break. Um, but I, I think the break is essential because players are playing so many games and especially with the second half of the season with so many more games we're playing this year with you know the uh, Champions League so it, it, it's essential to get a little bit of a break to get the legs back in order get the bruises and stuff all out of the system um, and so I actually would have preferred a little bit longer break but you know that's it's what we got and uh, it's good to have a little bit of time off had a longer break, if not for the Punta Arenas FC friendly on Saturday nights. Talk a little bit about what you guys are hoping to get out of that game. Um, well, let's. I mean, uh, it's a it's a friendly against a, you know an opponent from another country, um, and you're always looking to represent you know the Real Salt Lake and, and the United States. Well, um, but as a team, I think it's it's another game where we can work on tactics and get ready for the second half of the season. Get back to where we were when we left. And we're on break for a reason. That's because of the group stage of the World Cup. Every team's gone through, played at least one game now. Give us your thoughts. Uh, first of all, how much have you been watching? Uh, you seem like the type that would go through about every game, wake up nice and early, right? Uh, I have pretty much seen a little bit of every game. Um, uh, you know, I had my favorites coming into it, and maybe some of those picks have been rattled a little. Such as? Uh, well, I, I thought France would be better than they are. Um, Another example would be some of the African countries. I thought Ivory Coast would put on a little bit better performance. Um, Nigeria as well. Uh, but uh, it's just, it's every four years and such a special time for you know, football fans around the world that you know you can do nothing but just enjoy it. And uh, give us a couple teams that have impressed you so far. Maybe a, a dark horse pick for the semifinals, maybe even the final. Uh, impressed me so far. Um, Germany definitely impressed me. I thought they were very organized and they were knocking the ball well, very well uh, offensively. Um, Argentina, great offense. Their defense is a little bit suspect. So I'm a little concerned as to whether or not they That's why will. We love them. not they will like be able to withstand like you know a better team, you know when they play in the later stages. Um, I think a dark horse maybe to make the semis might be a Ghana. I think if they get through out of their group, they have a, a much easier road than most teams to the semis. So so I could see them being a dark horse game. That being said, gone and born, Robbie Russell. Thanks for joining us on The Insider. Welcome back to The Insider, joined here by RSL GM and ESPN 700 World Cup correspondent, Garth Lagerway. Keep adding titles to your name. This is impressive. We're going to need to get you new business cards. It's awesome. I like being a correspondent. If I, if I, if I left my office to correspond, that would, that would be even probably more exotic, but, but uh, I'll take it.
Paying, paying gig from, from the guys at ESPN 700 or right out of the goodness of your heart? I, you know, I, I, get, I get paid a, a nice uh, wage for uh, the, the broad uh, spectrum of my responsibility, so I'm not complaining. And including the hot or not Wednesday choice, very important. But uh, we'll move on from that. There's more important matters to discuss, such as the reason you're corresponding, the World Cup. Uh, everyone's gone through at least one game now uh, in the opening week. Give us your initial uh, thoughts about who's in, a couple teams that have impressed you and a couple that have disappointed. Uh, Argentina just annihilated South Korea this morning, and they've been—they were very impressive. Certainly, I think that uh, the Dutch team was very, very good, as was Germany. Germany is a little bit hard to tell, perhaps, because I think Australia were one of the weaker teams in the tournament. Um, but I think of the favorites, those three have really shown. I think uh, France obviously just lost to Mexico, and Italy struggled. Uh, so I think two of those traditional powers, and obviously Spain got beat by Switzerland as well. So a couple of the Euros struggling. Uh, the Brazil was also very impressive. So I think if you talk about kind of the top four teams, I think uh, Argentina and Brazil uh, of the South American countries, and then uh, the Dutch and uh, I'll come up with whoever I just said before. Uh, you know, there's at least one other uh, European team that's done very well, and so it, it, it's been uh, not. I wouldn't say the course, but I've been surprised at how poorly the African teams have done. And it's been a very good team tournament so far for uh, the South American teams. I think they have not lost the game yet, uh, if I'm not mistaken. The Uruguay winning it again this morning. The pride of Common Bowl. Yeah, there you go. Um, the biggest game in U.S. soccer history took place on Saturday. The next biggest, uh, now I guess, the new biggest match in U.S. history taking place Friday morning, uh, by the way, at Green Street, 8 o'clock, be there. Uh, give us your 30-second impression of uh, what the U.S. needs to do to get three points against Slovenia. Uh, they have to be patient. Uh, Slovenia is going to pack it in. Their goalkeeper is excellent. Uh, they have some solid defenders. Both their defending midfielders are very good players as well. Uh, so they have to be patient. They have to adjust to the role of favorite. And, uh, you know, they have to understand, too, that if they're not able to win this game, they can still go through with a win over Algeria, who I think is the weakest team in the group. So Slovenia is going to sit back. They're going to soak up pressure. Uh, we need to be aggressive, and we need to take it to them. We also need to not go for broke uh, in that the only way we get knocked out of the tournament is if we lose this game. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're ready on this stage, on this level now, to take on a mid-tier European team and uh, dominate possession and generate some chances reliably and hopefully uh, get a goal. Speaking of chances, some of those might be created by our own Robbie Finley. Uh, give us your quick thoughts on, on his play against England and possibly what he could add to these teams in the next two games. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because I think uh, he played a similar role for the U.S. that Heskey did for England in that uh, both players serve to be disruptive and stretch the defenses and create space for the midfielders to fill in underneath Gerard and Lampard for England and, and Donovan and Dempsey specifically for us. So uh, I think Robbie did a very good job of that. I think he was very active, uh, and I think he, he, uh, he played well off of Josie Altidore. Um, hard to predict if he's going to play uh, in this game. Obviously, we hope he does. Uh, and uh, you know, continue to be really proud of him and the, the strides that he's made. Uh, when you look at his touches and his runs and, and, and uh, you know, the progress he's made with the national team is really impressive. Much more from Garth Lagerway on the World Cup every day, 4.20 p.m. You can catch him on the Bill and Spence Show on ESPN 700. You can also be found on call700sports.com. Garth, thanks for joining us on The Insider. No problem.